Let's build it. So since you guys wanted a robot arm, I figured I would model it after Fisto, our in-house robotic fist bumping machine. Oh yeah, I'm missing the best part. Fisto provides the best fist bumps around, or beatdowns, it's the user's discretion really. Well, to rig this guy, we're going to need to add some bones. I don't want to fight for visibility of the bones either, so I'll make sure in front is checked on, and I'm also going to turn on the axes so I know the bone rotation. I'll just rotate this bone to align its local rotation with the global rotation so that we aren't getting any funky stuff either when we want to rotate this bone in posing. Finally, I'll call it root since I want it to be the parent bone of every bone that's to come afterwards. Now in edit mode, I'll duplicate this bone and use it for the arm01 mesh. I'm going to position my cursor at the ends of each side to be able to snap the head and tail of my bone to them. This is just a quick way to help me position the bone. Next, I'll extrude a new bone from the tail of the arm01 bone and snap it to fit the arm02 mesh. Now we can see how this parent relationship is going to work. When I rotate the bottom arm, the top one will move with it. We can also move the top one independently. However, there is no relationship right now with our root bone, so to fix that, I will select our child bone first, then the parent bone, and hit Control P, keep offset, because I don't want the bones to snap or connect together. So now when we move the root, everything's going to come with it. Now, octahedral is feeling a little clunky to me right now, so I'll change the display type to be stick. To develop the first half of our piston, I'll duplicate the top bone and position it exactly like we've been doing so far. Switching the transform orientation to normal, I'm going to want to position the tail of the bone much closer to the head because we're going to be using constraints later on that rely on the tail position. Next, I'll build the bottom piston bone the exact same way, but we don't need to worry about moving the tail. I'll also add a second bone in the same position as this one, and I'll call it target, which I'm going to want to bring down to about halfway. Checking parental relations, we can see that these bones were naughty children, and therefore inherited nothing. So by selecting them both first, and then our arm bone last, I'll hit Control P, keep offset again. Now everything should work as intended. So now that we have our skeleton developed, we need to actually add some skin to these bones, which I'm now realizing may be why they call it skinning. There's several ways that we can go about doing this. However, since this is a simple rig, I'm just going to bind everything 100% to each bone. I'll first select the mesh in object mode and shift select the rig itself. I'll then go into pose mode, select the bone I wish to attach to, and hit Control P, bone. This will just attach my mesh selection to that bone at 100% influence. From here, it's a matter of figuring out which bone you want to control which mesh, since the process is exactly the same. I'll parent the arms to the appropriate bones, as well as parenting the pistons to the two piston bones. Don't use the target bone yet though, because we're going to use that in a minute. Now, when we go ahead and pose our bones, you can see it's starting to move our robot. Pretty sick, right? But we've got some hiccups with our pistons, which we're going to be able to solve by using constraints. Yes, constraints are spooky, but broken pistons are spookier. So let's fix it. We'll start with the top piston. There are several ways we could do this, with two ways in particular that I'm going to show you. The first way is by using a damped track constraint. We need to select a target, being our rig, and then a specific bone which it will look at. This is where we will use the target bone. I've made sure to set it to the Y direction, which the local bone rotation is pointed towards. Now the top piston will face the target regardless of its position or parent rotation. Now an issue with using damp track is that we may be able to run out of piston or even pop the piston out the other side of the mesh. So another constraint we could use in its place is the stretch to constraint. Instead, this will stretch and distort the mesh within the confines of its bone 
and the target bone. Now, if this piston is textured, take note that this will stretch those textures. Otherwise, it is a pretty handy constraint that takes care of those clipping issues for us. I'll make sure to check on volume min to reduce the stretch distortion, and that's about our top piston done. For the bottom piston, I don't want it to actually stretch itself towards the top piece, so I'm fine to use a damped track constraint. I'll just target the top bone there, and pretty easily we've got ourselves not only a working piston, but a pretty capable rig. Now, FK systems are neat, but IK systems are for the cool kids. I'll extrude a new bone out from the top arm and clear the parenting with Alt P. I'll call this bone IK controller, and this will control our entire rig. I'll make sure to make the controller a child of the root bone, however, as I want it to be able to rotate as a unit. On our top arm bone, I'll add an inverse kinematics constraint with our rig as the target and the IK controller as the bone. Now if I move our controller, you can see that it just works. Kinda. To stop the entire rig from moving, I will need to increase the chain length to fit the desired number of bones I want to affect. In this case, it will just be two bones, as I only want to move the top and the bottom arms, but not the root bone. Now we're almost done, but I want to make sure that I can also move the IK controller freely without causing weird issues or unrealistic positioning, which we can see is currently <laughs> very easy to do. For the IK controller, I'll add a limit location constraint, which, well, does exactly as the name suggests. Moving the controller on the positive Z in local space, I can see that I may only want to go around about one-ish meter. Switching from global space to local space, I'll then provide the maximum Z value on the right bottom, a value of one meter. Now, as I move in the positive Z direction, I'm no longer able to move farther than one meter. However, our internal transformation in our end panel still updates for the movement, which in some cases may not be desirable. To turn that off, all we need to do is check on the for transform button and we can stop those transforms dead in their tracks. For the local X direction, I want there to be no movement whatsoever. This one is easy enough. I'll select both the max and min values and leave them at zero. Alternatively, we could lock the X axis in the end panel, but I'd rather keep all constraints in one place. If we look at the Y direction, there is the issue of our piston flying back into our mesh where realistically we would not be able to rotate to that extreme. I found something around a max of 1.5 meters and a minimum of around negative 0.2 meters to be appropriate. Finally, a minimum of negative 2 meters for the Z direction seems to work just fine. And with that, I'd say we have a pretty spitting image of old Fisto here. Well, let me know how I did down in the comments. Thanks to everybody that voted on this video, and make sure to cast your vote on our community tab for the next creation I make. If you're feeling charitable, make sure to leave a like, and if you like this kind of Blender content, make sure to subscribe. I've been Chunk, this has been Let's Build It in Blender, later skater. What kind of machines do you find in the Arctic? Snowbots, duh. How do, how do robots eat guacamole? With microchips. Why did the robot marry his wife? Couldn't resist her.